This video is part one of two for your IM2 section 3.3.2 notes. Our learning target uh, for this section is I can investigate, investigate a quadratic function written in standard form. So again, standard form is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we say when a is not equal to zero, because if a is zero, we wouldn't have a quadratic, we wouldn't have an x squared. Uh, our academic vocabulary, concave up and down for your parabola, the absolute max or absolute min of the parabola, uh, vertex of the parabola, axis of symmetry, or a lot of times I say line of symmetry, uh, the roots or the zeros of the parabola, um, the domain, the range, interval of increase, interval of decrease, so are a lot of the terms we're gonna be using for our investigations. So let's take a look at three different scenarios here. So in your notes, we're gonna use all three of these. I'll do a separate page for each one so you can decide if you wanna put it all together or one graph and all this per graph, however you wanna organize it on your notes. So let's start with the, the red parabola. The equation is y equals x squared minus two. So in this case, our a value is the coefficient of x squared. In that case, it's just one. Our b value is the coefficient of x. There is no x to the first degree, so that means the b value is zero. The c value is just the constant term, the number, so this is negative two. All right. The vertex for this parabola is right here at zero, negative two. Zero, negative two, which also happens to be the y-intercept, zero, negative two, because uh, the vertex is on the y-axis. Our axis of symmetry, in this case, is the y-axis. That will not always be the case, but for this one it is. So we're gonna say x equals zero. That is this line, the y-axis, x equals zero. The domain uh, for this quadratic, and really all quadratics, the domain is x equals all real numbers. So x equals all real numbers, unless we're talking about uh, in context of a story, in that case, there'll be some type of domain restriction. We're not using the entire parabola. The range for this parabola is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 2, right? The y's are going up, 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 and away from here. So the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Our zeros or our roots are basically the x-coordinate of the x-intercepts. So this one is, I believe these are about 1.4 and negative 1.4. So our our zeros or our roots will be 1.4 and negative 1.4. Uh, the x-intercepts, I would like you to write the x-intercepts as ordered pairs in my class. So it's going to be 1.4 comma 0 and negative 1.4 comma 0. So please take note of that. If I ask you for the zeros or roots, you can just give me uh, the x-coordinate values. If I ask you for x-intercepts, I want you to give me ordered pairs. All right. The interval of increase what part of the parabola is increasing as you go left to right? So that's going to be this side of the parabola here. All right. And so what we want to know, he wants to know what x values is y going up as you go left to right. So it goes from when x is 0 all the way to positive infinity. So we can write this as the inequality for now. Um, where x is greater than 0, not equal to 0, it's greater than 0 and less than infinity. Now, sometimes students will ask, well, why don't we just say x is greater than zero, which is true, but I want the interval of increase, so I want to know the lower limit and the upper limit for your x. So that's why I'm gonna write this way, and later on in this course, we'll learn how to, to write it using what's called interval notation. So this is gonna help us when we get to that stage. Now, the interval of decrease for the parabola will be this section here. Right? The y's are going down as x gets bigger, the y's are decreasing. So that starts way over there, right, at negative infinity. So x is going to be greater than negative infinity all the way until you get to, to zero. And for my class, we're not going to include the zero as, the, as decreasing, right? So we're not going to include it, so we're just going to say less than zero. We're at this point where it's going to bounce, right? It's going to change from decreasing to increasing. All right, let's look at another example. Let's look at the blue one here. 
Um, so that's this parabola here. So the form the equation is y equals negative x squared plus 3. So standard form, our a value is negative 1. It doesn't have a b value. b is 0. And c is positive 3. So our vertex is 0, 3, which is also our y-intercept, 0, 3. I want you to know, I didn't bring it up last, last slide, but the C value is also our y-intercept. You'll notice that. And why is that? Because if you plug in 0 for x, you're going to get whatever the C value is for y, right? Whatever that value is, what y is going to equal. So the C value tells us where the y-intercept is. Axis of symmetry, again, nothing exciting here. It's just the y-axis, so we're going to say x equals 0. Our domain is x equals all real numbers. And then our range for this one, well, the y's are going down forever from this point here. So that's going to be y is less than or equal to 3. Our zeros in this case, or our roots, are right there, the x-coordinate of the x-intercepts. So that's going to be, I believe it's about 1.7 and negative 1.7. And negative 1.7. Our x-intercepts, I want you to write it more formally. 1.7 comma 0 and negative 1.7 comma 0. All right. Interval of increase. Now for the blue parabola, it's, it's opening down. We know that from the a value. The a value is negative. So that is this part of the parabola. Okay. So our interval of increase is going to be from negative infinity. X has to be greater than negative infinity. And this will be less than 0. And then our interval of decrease is this half of the parabola. Okay? And so that's going to be the lowest. It's going to be from 0 to infinity. So I'm going to say x is less than infinity and it's greater than 0. All right? We'll get one more. Again, if you need to pause the video, pause the video to get this down. And go to the next slide. All right, last one's the purple one here. We get y equals 0.1x squared plus 1. So our a value is 0.1, our b value is 0, and our c value is 1. So from that, we know that 0, 1 is our y-intercept. And in this case, again, our, vert our line of symmetry, our axis of symmetry, is x equals 0. And our vertex is simply 0, 1. All right, the domain for this, again, all our parabolas, the domain is going to be all x values. So it's x equals all real numbers. On our range, this one's it's opening up because the a value is positive. So it's going to go up, up, and away from 1. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to 1. Ooh, our zeros are roots. There are none, right? It doesn't cross the x-axis, so there's none. And there's going to be no, no x-intercepts as well. All right, and then the interval of increase is going to be on this side. So our interval of increase is x is greater than 0 and x is less than infinity. So as you go from 0 to infinity, the y's are increasing. Okay. Conversely, on this side, when, when is y decreasing? As I come from negative infinity and I approach 0 with x. So x is greater than negative infinity and less than 0. Right? As I'm coming this way, y is decreasing as x gets in bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? All right. One other thing I'd like you to be able to do is, I know we use a lot of technology, we use Desmos a lot in class for graphing, but I want you to be able to graph these by hand as well. So to graph in standard form, it's kind of fun. Um, first thing I want you to learn and memorize is just a formula here. I'm just going to give you the formula for now. X equals opposite of B divided by 2A. And your B comes from here, the coefficient of X. Your A comes from the coefficient of X squared. So find the axis of symmetry. First thing I need to know is that, okay, A is 1 in this example, and B equals negative 2. 
and we know C is negative 3, but I don't need that for this formula. So to find the axis of the symmetry, I simply do this. I go x equals opposite. I like to put in parentheses because I want you to do the b over 2a first, get that sign, and then take the opposite so you don't make a mistake. So we're going to put this in parentheses. I'm going to say my b value is negative 2 uh, divided by 2 times 1, right? a value is 1. So that's going to be negative 2 divided by 2. So I'm going to get x equals opposite of negative 1, right? That's negative 1 inside, but we're going to take the opposite sign. So our line of symmetry, axis of symmetry, I'm going to say LOS, line of symmetry, is going to be x equals 1. All right, what does that mean? Well, that means x equals 1 is this vertical line. So I'd like you to put this on your, on your notes, put a table, uh, put a coordinate plane system. At x equals 1, do a dashed line. And what we know is the vertex is somewhere on this line. So how are we going to find that? Well, step two, we're going to find that vertex by taking the x equals 1 and substituting it into this equation to find what the y value is. So let's do that. So we're going to get y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. All right? y equals 1 minus 2 minus 3. Uh, so that's going to be what? Uh, negative 1, negative 4? Y is negative 4. So there we go. Our vertex, we're going to write it as an ordered pair, x comma y. It's going to be when x is 1, y is negative 4. So 1 comma negative 4. I come over to my graph. Boom. I plot the point. Okay? Now, I didn't put in my steps here, but we could quickly find the y-intercept as well, right? The y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 3, so I'm going to plot that point right now as well, okay? And if I was doing a table of values, my step 3, I'm going to do a little xy chart, and I'm just going to pick a few values to the left or to the right of my line of symmetry. So I could go x is 2, x is 3, x is 4, but I usually like to pick the side where my y-intercept is if it's close to, if it's on my graph or my parabola where I can see it. Um, I like to pick that side, it saves me time. So I'm going to pick that one. So we already know when x is 0, I get negative 3. So what's the next value of x you, you would substitute in? That's right, negative 1. We want to keep going this way. So I'm going to go negative 1. I substitute negative 1 in, I get uh, 1 minus negative 2. So isn't that 1 plus 2? 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So I'm going to go negative 1. And 0, so I don't go up at all. It's right there on the x-axis. Then let's try next value over. Let's go negative 2. Substitute negative 2 in. I get positive 4 minus negative 4. So isn't that 4 plus 4 is 8? 8 minus 3 is 5. All right, so negative 2, 5. So I go over to negative 2, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's probably enough points right there, but for fun, we'll do one more. Negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus negative 6 is 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 minus 3 is 12. So if I go negative 3, 11. It's barely off the graph. That's okay. I'll go right there. Okay. So then the last step, we're going to mirror the points across the axis of symmetry to draw the, to draw the parabola. So we know... The axis of symmetry, parabolas are symmetrical, right? So the equal distance away. So uh, this is one away from the line of symmetry. So I go whoop, one away to this side. This is two away. So I go whoop, two away over this side. Three away, whoop, one, two, three away this side. Okay? This one's four away. So I go one, two, three, four away here. There's your points. And then you do your best to draw a curve best you can it's not perfect but and there's your there's your parabola so that's graphing the parabola in standard form that ends part 1 of your of your notes for this section thank you